You are listening to The Powerful Creator Show with your hosts, Joya Sosnowski and Celia Shovel. We are diving into the next chapter of The Alchemist's Handbook. Get your notebook ready. Well, here we are. Here we are. Week five. Week five of The Alchemist's Handbook. Hope everybody had a great uh, Valentine's Day weekend. Yes, and good integration for the first four chapters that came. And you know, we actually kind before. of needed, we needed the, the two weeks to integrate from the last couple of chapters that we've read in this book. So welcome everybody. If you're hopping on, we I'm here with Celia Schauble and I'm Joya Sosnowski and we are reading and discussing The Alchemist's Handbook by John Randolph Price. It's an amazing book. It really is. We've gone through the first four chapters, which were pretty intense. No, it was the four weeks, but we've done um, six chapters. Six chapters, that's yes. correct. Sorry We're on chapter that. seven. Yes, we are on chapter seven. So <laughs> let's talk about, before we dive into chapter seven, Chapter six had a ton of questions, which was structuring your life with the energy of Saturn, which is the energy for those of you who are just diving in and listening to this. It's all about alchemy and divine alchemy and how we can create in our lives heaven on earth, bringing heaven to earth and and being in that consciousness and yeah, allowing that to flow through because we've done the healing work. Yeah. And how to receive. Now we're working it's receiving. like this is the receiving week, which yeah. is so beautiful. Yeah, the last chapter was all about, it asked questions that we were supposed to write about and contemplate for our life, which was around... Um, you want to do a little recap of what those each of those were? Yeah, healing the past. Healing the past. Oh, so, so it was all about healing the past. And so it was knowing your personality was the first one. Yeah. And the instructions were to make a list of your negative and positive traits and then ask the energy of Saturn to transmute the negative into positive. So, so gorgeous. that worked. <clears throat> the number two was what do you value in life? What do you personally value? And it was what do you consider most important to live a full and joyous life on planet Earth? What I love is that it says Saturn demands acceptance of the material world as temporarily providing gr proving ground for the spirit. Yeah, I love that too. It's so good. I circled it. Yeah, this so is juicy. the proving ground for yeah. spirit. For in order sure. for spirit to move and work. And that the spirit moves and works through each of us individually. Yeah. Yeah. That's so the beauty. great that we're all gifted in that way. Mm -hmm. Number three was listen to your thoughts. What are you thinking about all of the time or most of the time? And you may, su may be surprised to discover what you're thinking about. And the invitation was that every time you notice that you're experiencing <laughs> the less than divine <laughs> attitude, yes, of unworthiness, <laughs> judgment, anger, jealousy, fear, guilt, or other less than divine attitudes, just say no, and nope. then write or speak what you were feeling. And I, I actually did that for a couple of times, and it was pretty interesting mm -hmm. that to to say no to those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I actually started saying to myself, um, you know. I started talking to that voice in my head. I don't have it very often, but when it does kick up, sometimes I notice it. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, you're not allowed to talk to me like that. You're uh -huh. not allowed to talk to me like that. And I talked to that voice in my head like that, like some rando at the grocery store coming up to me and being a bitch. I'd be like, uh, you can't talk to me like that. Thank you very much. I'm sorry you're having such a bad day, but moving on now. Yeah, exactly. So do that to that, to that voice in your head too, right? I have the hush yourself. I love it. Hush yourself. Hush yourself. <laughs> That's so Southern of you. It is. It is. I can, I'm channeling my grandma. <laughs> Number four was how would you evaluate your personal relationships? So mm. this was beautiful because it had us delving into those um, parts of the relationships um, that reflect loving relationships, the ones that you consider to be loving and why, like actually sitting down and say, why is saying to yourself, why is this relationship of value to me? Mm -hmm. And why do I consider it that way? Mm -hmm. Or um, if you were not in a loving relationship or having an, a partner relationship, like what does that look like and how does that feel? Mm -hmm. And then um, also, mm -hmm. it was a juicy little topic here on this number four, was, um, how to um, how Saturn shows us who gets to be brought closer to us in creating more intimacy with those bonds of friendship that we would like. Yeah, yeah, like the one I have with you. Is I so know good. it is so, so good. So a lucky. sacred sister. And then lastly, um, 
or not lastly, actually, there's another before, but how we can create um, space and non-attachment or detachment without violating any of the principles of unconditional loving. Yeah. And then the last one was like allowing yourself no matter what to just allow the chapters on the relationships that get to go to go mm -hmm. and standing firm in that. And then I loved how it closed the chapter or nearly the losses that Saturn brings are the things that you do not want or need. No matter how much you think you want them, let them go, especially relationships that Saturn may end. Mm. So there are relationships that you know are going to end. You know you've stayed too long. Yeah. And it's really just cutting that energetical. I've never done that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Joya. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sure none of you listening <laughs> have ever done, done any of that, no, right? No, um, Number five was to look at your creative activity, which was, I love this because Saturn insists that you find something in life that truly delights you from the standpoint of originating, devising, designing, and making. It's bringing mm. something to, into existence through your imagination and ingenuity that did not exist before. And then I love that it goes on to talk about your own individual creative expression because as a person who is super creative, Ditto. And, and, teach, and you are too, and, teach, yeah. and I teach creativity in corporate, the number one thing I hear from people, what do you think it is when I say, I'm here to teach you guys creativity? And I'm not think? creative. And then I'll say, How do you, why are you not creative? Yeah. And what do you think they say? It's almost always the same answer. I don't know. Because I can't draw something that looks real. Oh, interesting. And that that's how people identify creativity, creativity and creativity. put it in a box. I can't oh. paint or I can't draw. So I'm Everybody can paint. They just get your finger out. And that's what yeah, finger painting's for. Exactly. It's so it's like it's re... re um, Contextualizing. Yeah, because yeah. creative acts are every single thing a person does that come out of... Uh, this urge to express yourself. So it could be anything like, I love nail polish, yes. and I get crazy with my nail polish. She does. I love my nail polish. I have since I was like two, <laughs> right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Your creative expression. Yes, creative expression shows up in my nail polish. So it could be like putting on um, makeup or, yeah. um, you know, just how we dress. Yeah, mohawks. Dressing. Like my kids wanted a mohawk when they were like really little, and I... I was like, I'm totally letting them do that. The, the husband, who's super conservative, was like, why would you cut our hair, our kids' hair like that? And I was like, dude, they asked for it. Yeah, let them be creative. <laughs> They're kids. But I love that it says, like, whatever you select as an activity is to see it through with discipline, regardless of how difficult the project may be. Because the energy of Saturn is about completion, like yes. getting things done, done, finishing it. Check. And so you're talking Cross about putting off. on makeup. You don't, like put mascara on one eye and the other. No. Like, no, I'm done. I'm not no. going to finish. No, you commit. And you're like, done. You have a full face Or you're full. cooking dinner. You don't just like, I'm not going to finish this. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Ha half done chicken. Yeah, yeah that'll no. be good. No. Yeah. So it's all <laughs> about this kidding. completion, whether it's a painting, whether it's a a gardening project, whatever the creative or household project. things around the house. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, making sure that it gets done and Completion. it's done and it's excellent. And doing it in cre with the spirit of creative. Yeah. So, so beautiful. Number six was? Health of mind and body. Mm -hmm. So this is really great in terms of like, yeah, you're killing it right on that. I just so. It and just me too. To me. Like, we're really, both of us are in like a super <laughs> healing, juicy yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I call it epic self-care flow Yeah, of just taking care of the self. Wow, and it didn't even occur to me really. I Until read this just again. right now, I Until saw your just face. just now, I was like, oh, uh -huh. duh. Wow, so how good. interesting that this has kicked mm -hmm. up during this time. Yeah. Fascinating. Me so too. <laughs> I, you know, just to share what we're talking about briefly, I'm participating in this thing called Zoe because I have struggled forever with my weight and wanting to lose. And I'm so, like, if you know me, I am so active. I'm so energetic. I love to exercise. I love to move. I'm always on the go. But for some reason, I'm like, I cannot lose this freaking 30 pounds. And I want it gone really bad. So I'm doing this. I have this thing in my arm that measures my blood fat and my blood sugar all day long. That's so fascinating. Yeah, I because love science. I want to know. And I love science, too. So yeah. I want to know, like, what's happening in my body. So I'm going to know mm -hmm. everything and have all the data because I care and I want to, you know, I want to live to be 105 or 10 or 20. That'd be awesome. So Yeah, I want to live that long, too. <sighs> A centurion sounds so sexy. Doesn't it? It does. For seven, me. seven was how's your social life? Yeah. Which is, you know, the only way to have a friend is to be one. Okay, so it was really funny. I saw a client the other day, and he was like, you know, it's not going to happen on the sofa. He was talking about how he had just moved here from Canada, 
And <laughs> he's like, I've been invited to go to Sedona because it's not going to happen on the sofa. And then I just felt condemned in a way because... <laughs> I I have been like damn it Netflix and chill my own personal version yes so funny mm. the only way to have a friend is to be one didn't yeah. you say that yeah that, I yeah. read that at the end yeah, I, I love, love that. that me too uh, putting your finances in divine order was number eight mm -hmm. that's right I, oh you know what I loved this is where that whole um, part really came up about how your mother is a reflection which yeah. Is, yeah, a little bit earlier in yes, the chapter, it yes. talks about how your mother is a reflection of, of your, prosperity. your prosperity. And like, I was like, oh, and this morning I wrote in my journal, because I do revisit these things before we meet, this piece around um, a pocket of emotion. It's like a pocketbook, right? Like, or your handbag or whatever, like that. those things are correlated. Yeah. Right. Like if yeah. you hit a pocket of emotion and you're like mm -hmm. having a m meltdown, like look at your money conversation. Look at your mama. <laughs> well, OK, so what's really interesting is I just inter interviewed a woman on my podcast and I released the episode last week and she teaches. Um, uh, she's actually a CPA, but she also does mindset around money. Mm -hmm. And she said that your money relationship is is a, a mirror of your relationship with a significant other. And so she said, if you have a dysfunctional relationship with your significant other, chances are you have a dysfunctional relationship with money. And I thought that was really interesting. Tell, tell, tell. Yeah. Saturn's all over it. Yeah. So number nine was, what is your philosophy of life? And I loved this question. Me too. So juicy. Yeah. So with the philosophy of life, it was um, like simple things. Like how would you sum it up? a vision of yourself that you would sum up as your ideal state. And so if they give examples, like, is it to li live, laugh, love, and be happy? Is it to live and let live? Is it to serve in the spirit of altruism? Is it to do everything for the joy of it? So it's kind of coming up with this idea of what is your philosophy of life. And I'm curious, did you come up with one? I did. I wrote it down. Oh, I wrote one. I'll, I have to go find my journal, but I wrote where, it down where, too. Tell me yours. Okay, hang on. It's in here. Spark outrageous, unique love. <laughs> so you. I love it. It's an acronym for soul. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's very much you. That's a good philosophy of life. And We're doing it already. My philosophy of life was uh, create the day. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we, we are. Yeah, because I'm a super big believer in just um, slowing down, that, staying. That was stay our in conversation the, this moment, yeah. the now present moment. Stay That's in the right. day you're in, mm -hmm. and create in the day. That's all you have to worry about is today. Well, this is all we have. It's exactly. This but is it. The mind <laughs> likes to get stuck in the past and project into the future, and it doesn't stay in the present. It forgets about the day, and we just get caught in these monotonous routines of life, and we forget that who's oh, that other guy that I read. His thing that said. Um, Live life for a living, right? Live life for a living. I love I that. I love that, Me too. too. Me too. Who, who said that? Do I forgot remember? his name. Um, I don't remember. Boop -a -doop. Jesse, Jesse somebody or other. I'll find out. So fantastic. And then number 10, the last question we were to contemplate was? The last question we were to contemplate was, how do you wish to be known by the world? By the world. Not in the world, but by, by the, the world. world. And yeah. you fill in the blank. I am the man who, I am the woman who, I am the person who, blank. Yeah. And what'd you come up with? Uh, I am a person who, I wrote it down, but it was something, I don't have my journal in front of me, but it was mm -hmm. something along the lines of, um, did exactly what she wanted to do. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Because what could be better at the last breath and being like, I did exactly everything I wanted to do. I don't feel yeah. like I left anything on the table. Yeah, me either. Every yeah. place that I have like been in my experience, like where I felt like I've left my integrity unchecked or whatever, I have gone back to repair. It's a lo it, it takes some diligence. And, yeah. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. So I show up. And what was yours? What That's is it? It's that simple. I show, I show up. up. Yeah, sh you're mm -hmm. a woman who showed up. I'm a woman who I showed love up. That. That's right. That's so <laughs> <great>. <laughs> a woman who showed when up. When I was choking, she was there. She showed up. <laughs> 
So I so we had talked mm-hmm. about before, like our love. Both of us have a love of old cemeteries. Yeah. And reading the simple things that people write mm-hmm. on their headstones and on their gravestones, and people. Some people write some really beautiful things. I know. And I just was like, wow. You know, I get taken by that. Like this was what this person wants. What to was sum up important their life. to them? Yeah. yeah. This is how they sum up their life. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so let's dive into chapter seven. We're in the chapter seven of the Alchemist's Handbook. I hope you guys did, and ladies, guys, gals, and humans, did your homework over the last two weeks that we had off Mm. in integrating and working. Okay, so Celia and I have both manifested crazy stuff going on in these last two weeks. Yep. Money, contracts. Money, contracts. Trips. Playing days of play (laughs) and and joy (laughs) that were totally spontaneous. And random. Um, Not random. I'm on this massive health thing that I didn't even correlate to this two weeks of integration, but it like, yeah, the Saturn energy kicked in. It was like, you got to do something about this. Let's let's act and do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting really hot. I'm going to turn off my heater now. Oh, good. That sounds really good. I'm cooking. I'll I'll begin. You can start. Um, You know what? I I love the idea of... um, just taking a moment and bringing us present and just, I invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath and just bring yourself into right here, right now. And I would like to just call in the light before we read this chapter. Let's do it. Mm calling it in for you too and we yep. invite you to call in the light for yourself as well yes and for whatever um however you name your source we just ask that it would be present for you i say father mother god <laughs> creator of all we ask for a covering blessing we ask that any negativity, any upset from our day, anything that might be of a lower vibrational occurrence that might be happening on the inside that can be lifted at this time with grace and ease that it be done so now, taken up into the nothingness from which it was created and transmuted into the highest light available. We ask. So it is. So it is. <sighs> All right, sister. Here we go. Let's dive in. Chapter 7 Veiled Isis, the Receptive Sheath. The next major step in the alchemical process is to become aware of understand and intimately know the veiled Isis, the archetype of the hidden sanctuary of creative power. Veiled are the spiritual truths of the invisible worlds, and this shroud of obscurity is removed as we understand her function and secret processes. In the wisdom teachings, we find that Isis was called the Virgin of the World. In her virginal state, she is penetrated by the Saturn infused personality, which was the mind of will and choice. She then becomes pregnant with the manifesting ideas and takes on the role of the world mother, the veiled or known creative power, as we will discuss in the next chapter. Isis is symbolic of receptive nature, the watery maternal principle, which creates all things out of herself after impregnation has been achieved. Sacral chakra. Sacral chakra. Yep. Also, the mysteries of hermeticism, the great spiritual truths hidden from the world by the ignorance of the world. Hidden truths hidden from the world by the ignorance of the world. (laughs) And the keys of the secret doctrines of the ancient philosophers are all symbolized by the Virgin Isis. According to ancient philosophers, she personified universal nature, the mother of all productions. The priests of Isis became adepts in the use of the unseen forces of nature. In the Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets, we read, the Hellenistic world identified Isis of the, myri- of the myriad names. 
with every other female divinity. Medieval occultists, in turn, found her glorified in the writings of Plutarch and identified with her with the world soul or Sophia. She appeared in numerous occult books as the naked goddess crowned with stars. Her dominion over land and sea symbolized by her right foot on the earth and her left foot in the water. Astrologically, this archetype is known as the moon, representing the feminine or feeling nature. I think this is really interesting that we're reading this when tomorrow is 2-22-2022, which is feminine. Yeah. Wow. And it's taking place on the cusp of winter and spring. And it's on a Tuesday. Two. (laughs) (laughs) Two, two. Isabel Hickey writes that the moon rules the form side of life and the functional activity of the body. And the key words are matter, maternalness, receptivity, feeling, creativity, and impressionability. Isis is symbolized in the tarot as the high priestess, the link between the spiritual and physical planes. Dr. Paul Foster Case, recognized world authority on the tarot, says that the high priestess is a virgin, and the blue color that predominates this key, as well as the flowing robe, represents water. Mm -hmm. The curtain behind the high priestess is a symbol of virginity. It connects the two pillars of light and darkness and all other pairs of opposites. And according to Alfred Douglas, the book or scroll she holds in her lap represents the mysteries of the hidden temple of which she is the guardian. She is the channel whereby the divine is made manifest on earth. Remember this point, the channel whereby the divine is made manifest on earth. I'm kind delicious. Of so delicious. <laughs> I love the softness. It feels um, as I'm reading these words like mm-hmm. maternalness and matter and receptivity and feeling and creativity and the divine, a channel where the divine is made manifest on earth. It just feels so flowing and very, very soft, not forcing. It's, no. it's this energy allowing. of flow and allowance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's fluid. And the doing with purpose and intentionality mm-hmm. and gentleness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tender. Tenderness. Yeah, Yeah. that's the word that keeps coming for me is tender. And if you take the opportunity to look that word up in the dictionary, ooh, it's so good. Well, now I'm curious. I know. It's not just the emotion. It's actually about money, a tender. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's also a vote. Right. And it's like a sailing term. There's all kinds of interesting interesting. Mm. philosophy attached to that. The ancient said that the moon is ruled by Saturn, and to use Edwin Steinbacher's rather graphic terms, we see that Saturn is the woman with the penis and the old god, and the moon is the vagina and the goddess of the night. The dynamic alchemist said that in order to release the power unto manifestation on the physical plane, there must be a sexual affinity with the aspect of creative law, which I interpret to mean a loving coupling, a passionate joining of energies. The modern metaphysics we find, is in modern metaphysics, we find a so-called analogy um, with the conscious mind being the ruler or imprisoner of the subconscious mind, which receives the impression and immediately begins to create the pattern for manifestation. In a book on hermetic philosophy written in 1912 by three initiates, we find that Thomas J. Hudson attained great popularity in 1893 by advancing his well-known theory of the objective and subjective minds, which he held existed in every individual. This was another erroneous conclusion, one that diminished the dynamics of the alchemical process. If Hudson had been familiar with the original teachings of the alchemists, the theory of mental gender, he would have formulated a new theory that reduced our basic divine constitution to nebulous psychological terms. Psychological terms. The author, the authors go on to say that the duality of mind was a part of the ancient hermetic teachings. 
The I represents the masculine principle of mental gender and me the aspect of becoming. The tendency of the feminine principle is always in the direction of receiving impressions, while the tendency of the masculine principle is always in the direction of giving out or expression. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? Very. The majority of persons really employ the masculine principle, but little and are content to live according to the thoughts and ideas instilled into the me from the eye of the other minds. So me is the aspect of becoming. Me is the aspect of becoming. Mm -hmm. The tendency of the feminine principle is always in the direction of receiving impressions. So this is where you open your mind to receive the downloads. That's right. And allow them to come through. Allow in them order to come to, through. Yes, in order to land. And then the masculine mind puts in the plan and the do and the action. That's right. To create. And so we are always using those energies that are already within us. Yes. It's not really necessarily what's outside of us. Like I'm a woman, you're a woman. It's or I'm a I woman. I identify as a woman. I, or, yeah. or how you identify. It's mm -hmm. more about being in the wholeness of everything that each one of us are moment to moment and living from that place and exerting that energy forward. It's so exciting. This is fascinating. Let us also remember that rather than a subconscious mind, which implies an aspect of a human mental nature, we have an aspect of God, the feminine principle of the Holy Spirit functioning as our creative power. We are not all of God, but God is all of us. That is one of my favorite sayings, and it's in my code of being. I love it. So I love this um, feminine principle of the Holy Spirit. What's really interesting is that in the Aramaic teachings, the Holy Spirit is the Ruka de Kucha, and she is a feminine principle. Yes. Yeah, it's feminine. It's a queen. It's the queendom. So it should actually say, like, queendom come when you're reading that prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. In Alice Bailey's writings, Master Dwal Cool says that the science of impression is the mode of life of the subjective world, which lies between the world of external happenings, i.e. the world of appearances and of exoteric manifestation, and the inner world of reality. I'm going to read that again because it's kind of funky. It's a big one. Science of impression is the mode of life of the subjective world, which lies between the world of external happenings and the inner world of reality. So he's saying that there's a science of impression, science of creating, making, putting on the world. Yeah. He also says that the subconscious is a terribly inadequate term, thus agreeing with the alchemists. Yet he says that the subjective realm is vitally more real than the objective since it is entered, but oh, once it is entered and known. It is simply a question of the acceptance, first of all, of its existence, the development of a mechanism of contact, mm -hmm. the cultivation of the ability to use this mechanism at will, and then inspired interpretation. I think it's Dan Millman who talks about the spiritual laws. Yes. And the, the first spiritual law is acceptance. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Oh I know. Gosh. With ISIS at this point of contact, rather than some... In indistinct submental phenomenon, we have a definite personality to interact with, an actual part of our spiritual constitution. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you giggling? Because it's like the inner being, it's like our inner being is in there. And we have all these different aspects of being, which I know, is what I love. Which is what I, yeah. I love it too. So it's making sure that each one of my aspects of my being are being heard, accepted, yeah when I say heard, I mean acknowledged, yes. like that there's that part of me, like whatever it is that gets to be acknowledged mm -hmm. so that things can become the way that they get to be. And that's where I came up with that word the other day where I said, it's coming, your holiness is coming back to your whole, whole eye-ness. The whole, well, and look, it yeah. showed up. Yes. I mean, exactly. <laughs> it always the whole eye is in the chapter whole seven. Eye. Right. The moon goddess is the essence, the essential character of our me state completely receptive to every heartfelt desire and ready to act on it. Mm. Working as Saturn, the angel of light, with Isis, the receptive sheath, you will create a paradigm so powerful that the manifestation of the ideal life cannot be delayed or denied. It is time the courtship began. 
Ooh, and recording ourselves. I love that. It's so sexy. I just love it. Well, I really know that when you're truly creating your life and living your passion and fulfilling mm -hmm. your your expression mm -hmm. of your divine self, not not a selfish ego way, right? We're not talking about, oh, I need this stuff outside of me to make me feel like a complete person. No, this is about feeling like a whole person from the inside that you want to express that wholeness outside. outside. Yeah, so it's different. And when you start doing that, your relationships are so much happier because they're not reliant on other people to fulfill anything or for, for them. you exactly because you're feeling you're coming from your fullness and you can give from your overflow and you give from the overflow that's right yeah. so people are basking in your your light while they're in their own light and there's no weirdness exactly. i'm exactly. sure you've met somebody who's like super jelly i say jelly as in jealous yeah yeah or or like has some funky energy and that's the that's the imbalance, nothing to do with me right. per se. They're just not standing in their They're own They're not power. standing in their own light. And so yeah. then it's interesting to see because as reflectors, we're all refre reflecting all the time. Right. There's this really beautiful opportunity to, to be all of that, even when people are uncomfortable because it's not about me yeah no or i was gonna say it's not about you girl not about you. It's not and about I, always, you. I always say you know if to somebody if they say oh i'm you know you've got this you've got that i like this i like that i wish i could do this i wish i could do that and i always say you spot it you got it that's right and that's that, right that's so the true. good things it and is. that's the good things too yeah. right the things we like about somebody mm -hmm. or love about somebody or wish we could do that if somebody has that energy is always you spot it you got it is not just the negative things it's also the positive, positive. things yeah but yeah I, and i love that we get to talk about the more positive aspects of things as opposed to being in the, uh, I'm going to use the word downtrodden energy. Low vibe. Low vibes. No low vibes, man. Well, and it's easy to get sucked into that world. It is. I mean, it's like, it's the world of the ego. It's all around mm. comparison and how is this uh, affecting me? And me, 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 me. Yeah, it's the me, 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 me <laughs> choir. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. All right. We're going to make contact. Boom, boom, boom. Here Let's we go. <clears throat> Making contact with Isis, the moon goddess. In your in your visit with Isis, she may very well take the form and appearance of her symbolic representation. The ancient said that she was the most beautiful woman in the world, and she may be sitting between two pillars wearing a blue flowing flowing robe with a silver crown resting on her blonde hair. She has also been depicted as a lovely blonde maiden in a meadow, holding a flower in her right hand, a scroll in the other. And she has been seen in ancient times as a partially nude woman wearing a loose fitting green garment. She could appear to you in other ways, depending upon the projection you're making upon her. To me, she appears as a radiant light Feeling the screen of my mind and centered in this brilliance, I see the facial features and the outline shape of a female figure. Your spirit guide will escort you now to see this high priestess. Relax, go into meditation and ask that you may be taken to her. Feel the great love all around you as you make the inward journey when you see the flickering light ahead, you will know that you are approaching this angel. As you become, as you come into her presence, look into her eyes and express your love with deep feelings. Tell her that you have taken on the Saturnian energy, the angel of the presence and the identity of your personality and that you are willing, you will be working in a very close relationship with her to structure a new life for yourself. Ask for her cooperation in doing this. She will assure, assure you that you have it and may offer suggestions on how to visualize only that which is harmonious, beautiful, and noble in your life. Write down what she says in your journal. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's really funny as I think I'm looking at throughout my whole life, every time I painted or I, I do these expressive paintings where I don't even know, I don't start with an intention. I just start with to see what's going to come out. 
And for many, many years, I would always paint this figure who sounds exactly like this Isis character. And mm -hmm. I wanted to show you something, but Zoom, I'll have to show it later. But I, um, I painted this woman who looks, who is exactly like this, and I've seen this figure. So it's very interesting to know that this is the energy that I'm, that we all have access to. And yeah. it's this archetypal energy of spirit, of the many energies, the many forces mm. of the spiritual forces, right? That we all work with and learn, can learn what it says right here to tap into, to use, mm. to call upon and to ask to create a life it's harmonious, beautiful, and noble. And I think that that's like the most important key is that when working with these energies and working with higher vibrational energies, when you're asking for guidance or you're asking for what is the high, what's the highest good for your what's life, the highest good? that it, mm. it will arise. And it always arises as something you're not expecting. It arises as something you will understand. It's, it has been my experience that I'm like, mm. oh, like how you were saying this morning, like this is, I'm going through this thing and this is the process. This, this, this is, is the it. work, this right? So yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Like that's how it shows up as like, mm -hmm. as the work that's like, if you're praying, like for instance, like, oh, I really want to be a more patient person while well, the work is going to show up is every opportunity to practice patience. That's right. By putting me in, in situations to be patient. <laughs> What? And beyond right. patience is temperance. Like, yeah. and those are two of my favorite words. Yeah. Because yeah. when I'm not being patient, I'm being tempered. So it's like iron sharpens iron. This is how you get sharp. Yeah. Yes. The obstacle is the path. Exactly. And that's really the what what we're trying to say is like, and using examples like the patience thing that it mm -hmm. arises as like, oh, I asked for patience. So why is everybody driving so slow? Why am I hitting every red light? Why are the grocery store lines 20, mi 20 minutes long? Because it's the, and the universe is asking for your congruence. Yes, because you're getting yes. what you asked for. That's and so right. that's what this is. When it's for your highest good, it's going to arise in ways that are going to help you to grow and stretch and move into a higher way of being and it doesn't always show up as a red carpet and a velvet robe uh no <laughs> i think that's what we're trying to say <laughs> until you get to the higher vibration where where the red carpet and the velvet rope can now appear and it can be like that because it's for now that's for your highest good because now you're not you're prepared for it and you're not there just for ego you're there to now Work. take other people with you right? right it's not just about you so it's always for the good of what it, it has to be that what's good for you is good for me too. Is good for everybody. That's right. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. unity. It's the because we're all connected as one being, mm -hmm. one source. Yeah, so, so beautiful. I love that. I really love this energy. Ooh, we're gonna dive mm -hmm. into the energy centers. Go, well, here girl. we go. <laughs> Isis works through three energy centers initially through the solar plexus and the heart, and later after impression through the throat chakra. Tell Isis that you want her to merge into your conscious awareness and to bring her light, her power, her wisdom, and her very presence into the permanent state of reality in your mind and heart. Now see the bonding in the light. Feel the vibrational change in your energy field as the light completely encircles your solar plexus and heart centers. Feel the warmth, feel the love, feel the passion. Now speak words lovingly as you tell her how you will protect her and be her guardian. Mm, do you want to do a call and response I on this? I do, so we, as usual. We invite you to repeat these words after Celia reads them. From this day forward, I will do my very best to make sure that thoughts of discord and harmony do not reach you. From this day forward, I will do my very best to make sure that thoughts of discord and disharmony do not reach you. With all my mind and heart, I will protect you from the negative forces of fear, anger, resentment, and guilt. With all my mind and heart, I will protect you from the negative forces of fear, anger, resentment, and guilt. I will treat you with respect of an aspect of my divinity and will give you thoughts and feelings of only the highest order. I will treat you with the respect 
of an aspect of my divinity and will give you thoughts and feelings of only the highest order. In turn, I ask that you be responsive to my will for good, which will be in harmony with universal truth, goodness, and beauty. In turn, I ask that you be responsive to my will for good, which will be in harmony with universal truth, goodness, and beauty. Now listen to her response and write down what you hear in her in your journal. I feel an energy there. I feel it in my solar plexus. Me too. Yeah. I feel like I could cry. Oh, it's beautiful. It's really it feels beautiful. very sacred. Yeah. It feels yeah. like a super sacred invitation into the this beautiful power that we all have within us and to open it, to be receptive to it. And it's something to be cherished and nurtured. Yeah. So beautiful. Making the marriage work. I love the title of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm married to myself. Um, hey, <laughs> right. Yeah, first, and foremost, first and foremost. That's right. Yeah. Because then I don't care if, if, hot joe down the block is winking at me it doesn't, it doesn't hey, matter hot joe. Yeah, hot joe. i wink at myself all the time <laughs> in the mirror <laughs> all right we know that thoughts are things or rather they become the form and experience as they bear fruit this takes us back to the earlier exercise what are you thinking about all day long isis the high priestess of me i love that me takes these thoughts particularly those that are trends of thought and sets up a mental atmosphere, a pattern for the creative power. She doesn't reason or argue. Her, her mind method is deduction, that is working from a premise to a logical conclusion. She takes what you give her and once and at once begins to build the inner design for the outer manifestation. To work as a team for the highest good, you must change your attitude about life and stop complaining about what's happening out there. Knowing that you have the power to change your world, you stop judging by appearances, see from the highest vision, and let Isis be impressed only by the thoughts and feelings of truth. And what is truth? It means that wholeness, abundance, success, right relations, love, joy, and peace are part of the natural process of life, the natural laws of the universe. And that's what you con concentrate on, knowing that this concentration infuses Isis, bringing forth the con conception of the ideal. Isis is completely in tune with these natural laws. Although she yields to your thoughts and feelings, she is one with universal mind that has no consciousness of scarcity, poverty, failure, futility, illness or discord. She knows the lavishness of the universe, the extravagance of nature, the beauty of accomplishment and achievement, the truth of wholeness and perfection and the harmony of loving relationships. That's her nature. And to impress any contrary ideas is to adulterate her energy. The alchemists believed that the great percentage of our mental processes were continually taking place in the energy of the moon within. And that if the individual was passive about this essentially unlimited power, life would drift along without purpose. They knew that this archetype of me looked to the authority of Saturn, the I mind in tune with the Saturnian energy to direct her work with clear vision, courageous determination, and spiritual assertion. And the greater the work that we give her, the greater her performance. She asks, what do you will to be, to do, to have? She wants the ideal as conceived in your mind, beautiful, opulent, complete, without any concern for present conditions. It doesn't make any difference if there's an imagined finished picture. To her, it's real. Not to come, but now. What do you see? What do you want to see? Hold this vision steady in your mind and let Isis build the mold for its manifestation. Yes, be do have. Yep, so juicy. And you can finish us off, my dear. Oh, thank you. 
Another point to bear in mind in the relationship is that she does not respond well to coercion, fearful pressures, or petulant, petulant persuasions. Mm. Don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and if it takes on those vibrations from you, you will find your entire energy field in a downward spiral. Work with her love, wisdom, spiritual vitality, great expectations, and the feelings of joy and peace. Feel her energy again encircling your heart and solar plexus and gaze into her beautiful face. Lovingly converse with her, knowing that she will be ready and willing to accept the light of your perfect world when you begin the alchemical process. I just felt a complete whoop de doo feeling. Uh, almost, did you feel that? <laughs> like, did you feel it? Because <laughs> that's exactly what it did. I'm like, yay! Silly so just drew it with her finger, and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I felt. It was like because what I'm feeling like is the um, the momentum, uncanny timing of this chapter right now and inviting this energy in and because tomorrow, tomorrow this manifestation energy of the 222 2022 energy is all about getting it's a master creator number it's yeah. master creation and it's creation and cooperation yes with the highest with the highest good and with each other that's right and it's like we're stepping out of the energy i'm just so blown away right now about our conversation we had this morning about duality yeah and that this is the energy and the invitation to step out of the duality to the cho the choice to step out of duality and yeah. step into this creative expansion of your own being what do you yeah. want to build and create like hold that vision in your mind's eye this this wild, crazy, hairy, audacious, bold, the B -hag. crazy dream, the mm -hmm. BHAG, mm -hmm. right? I know it. Mm -hmm. And hold that vision, hold that mm -hmm. goal, feel it already done. Because that's what it is. Saying. It's already done. Yes. Live in the live in the energy of the wish fulfilled, mm -hmm. right? The, it's already done. Mm -hmm. And so we're already in it. We're giving thanks for it. And I want to invite everybody right now to do a state change. Let's raise our vibration. Oh my gosh, let's do okay, it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is in the in the energy of this 222. So if you're not if you're sitting, I invite you to stand up. I'm gonna stand up. Ugh, Celia, stand up. And we're going to what are we oh we're shaking it out. Oh. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna <laughs> think about like for a minute, just close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're gonna bring to mind now something really big and crazy that you want for your life mm. that if you've stepped out of the front door of your house right now and stepped mm. into this new reality of yourself picture yourself already there doing the thing having the things being the thing being in that environment whatever it is just picture it right now in your mind's eye and then the invitation is to just open your open your arms big to the sky and look up and go, oh my God, thank you. I'm so excited. Oh thank you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I am so excited about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And, you and then that's how you work with that energy in a really powerful way. And it's crazy, but it works. It changes your state, Ooh, and then you I get to the, work, right? I have the goose chilies. Oh, and then you the get spirit to work. spirit sparkles. Spirit sparkles. And then you get to work. Well, actually, she gets to work. She gets to work, and you get to work. Uh, oh, yeah. And it's like this energy I always see in my mind's eye when I'm contemplating what I want and what I'm creating, that I know that the energy of spirit like I'm doing this with my hands, but you can see me. I look like Mr. Wax Miyagi. On, yeah. Wax on. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. But what I'm what I'm envisioning in my mind's eye are um ripples in a pond. Yeah. Like if you throw a rock in a pond and it makes ripples and you like throw sound. another rock, it makes another ripple and the ripples inter intersect. Yeah. And that where in. those ripples intersect, that's where spirit meets your effort. That's mm -hmm. where the intersection happens and everything. And when you live in that space of that vibration where you're constantly in motion of exactly what you want mm -hmm. with 
holding the attitude because your attitude is a direction. That's right. Attitude right? is a direction. Attitude is a direction. Mm -hmm. And you're holding this attitude and you're being thankful and you're in gratitude mm. and you're working with this energy. And then here comes the energy of it meets you. Of Spirit the Saturn meets you. meeting you. Boop. Spirit meets you at the point of action. Because That's as right. Celia likes to say, what I want wants me. 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 And it's like that's that energy. That's right. <sighs> so beautiful so i love that this is like we're talking about this before the 222 because you know that's the invitation for this there's, this day there's no efforting in it no there's no efforting in it it's not something that um that i have to try for or that i have to overgive to or be any different than i am today that's yeah. a state change yeah. just like allowing the self to be exactly yeah so yeah. gorgeous loving loving yourself as you Ex are exactly as you are knowing that dirty hair clean hair <laughs> doesn't matter it doesn't matter nobody cares what you look like no uh -uh. Mm -mm. so this is just really beautiful and powerful it is powerful i'm so excited <sighs> anything you want to add to all of this um, what we've we're, we're we've began our courtship now everybody we are officially courting. We are in the process. Oh, I love that word courtship, right? So what comes forward for me is that it's a compound word and there's the court of law and there's the court of spirit, mm -hmm. right? And then there's like the experience where I'm wooing myself forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. And then ship like, hello, we're on a rock spinning right now in the middle of Spaceship the- Spaceship Earth. <laughs> on spaceship earth come in come in Joya, come in ground control to <laughs> major, major tom, tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so oh my funny. gosh but my point is is that um we are each at the helm of our own ship yeah like yeah it's, Ooh, ooh and for, so from yeah. the standpoint of a ship Sailor. do you stand on the bow looking at where you're going or do you stand yeah. on the back looking at the wake of what you've already done what you where you've yeah. already been like that's a choice that is a choice. And where are you choosing from? Yeah. Ooh. And where are you choosing from? Ooh. So everybody, that's the invitation now is to really bring to mind over tonight, tomorrow, the whole week, the whole week, especially tomorrow, mm -hmm. to bring in this, this vision mm -hmm. and merge your conscious awareness with the light, her powers, her wisdom, the presence, mm -hmm. this very state of reality in your mind and heart. And this is about stepping into a new reality stepping into the 5d earth grid as we're as we're coming into this higher vibrational plane and way of being and leaving all of the nonsense behind oh you know what's so funny i don't have it that way how do you have it i have it that the 5d is already happening oh it is already happening yeah, yeah. As, as as long as as well as the 3d and the yes, 2d and all yes, the other d's yes. yeah they're all happening at once yeah, it's all yeah. happening at once it's up it's to us like, to shift into it yeah yeah that's what I'm, that's what I mean. Yeah. We have to raise our okay. vibration into it. I see. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, wait, no, it's already well, the, it's all present already. But now the planet is having more and more access to it for people because the planet yes. vibrationally is raising her vibration. Yeah. Yeah. She sure is. She well, she's is. she's facilitating and holding us the same way. Yeah. She's like, you know holding. what? I'm getting tired. All you people, you just aren't figuring it out. <laughs> well, so I'm going to raise my vibration. So y'all going to have to come along in the perfect world. I like that yeah in the perfect world yeah yeah but it's what you make it it is it's perfect right now <laughs> and that's what i love about love is that love is always perfecting so being brought forward in in a more loving more nurturing more there's always more yeah yeah there is always more in the overflow. Yes, yes exactly, I know. Exactly. Oh, All right. So juicy. Thank you so much. We want to just take yeah. the opportunity to say thank you for joining us. We know that you can spend your time however it is. You're mm -hmm. never going to get it back. We say thank you for being with us. Absolutely. Yes. We love it. And we'll be back next Monday night for chapter eight. eight. Probably Which chapter is, eight and nine because eight is pretty short. Is it? Is it? Let's look at it. Yeah. Eight's only a couple eight. of pages. So eight. I think we'll do eight and nine because nine jumps into achieving right mm. understanding, which I love. That's Ooh. a um, that comes from a Buddhist concept of right understanding. The rightful mm. path, the eightfold path, is right understanding, and from every wisdom teaching has right understanding. So that'll be really great to dive into, and so it's really an invitation to start aligning your your truest desires of your heart, well, and also to with your mind. 
in the soul conversation of what is your soul wanting to experience? Yeah. Wanting what is I'm asking the question, I'll use the I term, what does my soul want me to experience for my highest good? So I guess that's the invitation to ask that question of yourself. What does my soul want me to experience for my highest good? That's right. And then being open to the idea and the knowing that the next thing that happens is actually for your highest good and having the faith to follow it mm-hmm. no matter yes. what and no matter how crazy it sounds like <laughs> i mean i've been told some crazy stuff like go to texas i'm like i don't know but i'm i was clearing slave karma so like i needed yeah. to go it was powerful yeah yeah, yeah. It, has, it has a super powerful trip for you. super powerful yeah. so it has purpose it we does. might not like it and nobody says you have to like it we we all signed up for this and we're here yeah for our soul's work so everyone wishing you a super amazing 20 two 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 day tomorrow so here here's my invitation to you tomorrow help us raise the vibration yeah planet so we ourselves Let's teach them what we're going to do tomorrow. i'm going to yeah, we're going to be on it. we're going to be on uh, mountain standard time so wherever you are the invitation is to set the alarm mm-hmm. and let's set the intention to raise the vibration of this planet to love and peace for all for all and it's the invitation is we're going to chant the note from heaven the heavenly note at 2 22 p.m and all the have all that note from heaven is is Let's do it right now with them well we will mm. but i need to explain how to do it so mm-hmm. first it's about um and i'll have i have a class actually on youtube about this too so you take a you you want to fill your belly about a, a really deep breath and this is a this comes from my beautiful sound healing teacher gita ben david in uh, denmark she discovered this note from heaven and she teaches this as a spiritual practice and she got it from her t- teacher from India who gave it to her as a spiritual practice. So, and it is a spiritual practice. <laughs> it's an intense spiritual practice that's very simple. And what it is, is you, it's about surrendering. It's about opening your throat, opening your voice and making a sound that comes from, you know, you've surrendered to the note from heaven when you feel the vibration not just in your throat and not just in your chest but you could feel it in your hands your being you could feel it in your feet yeah. you can feel it in your legs you can feel it in your belly you can feel it everywhere in your resonant chamber called your body and your voice changes if you keep doing this practice what happens is that you start singing overtones and undertones and you'll sometimes have you'll sound like a chorus of people are singing with you but it's just you singing by yourself and your voice is making all these different sounds and it's just beautiful can we do five five and then end can we do five five oz Oz, okay and then end and that way they'll get an idea of what that is to be done at 222 yes so at 222 standard oh and you do it pacific time or or easter wherever you are and Mm -hmm. it's 222 here's the invitation so you open yourself up you ask for your light to be called into you. You open your arms wide so the arms are open in a in an open stance, which is the surrendering pose. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And then you take a deep breath. And I'm going to face Celia. We're going to do. We're this together. facing each other, so you can't see it. I love not only is Celia my one of my dearest friends. She's also my song sister now, so I love that. So beautiful. <laughs> I love singing with you. So the invitation is you just take, and the note is ah, the word is ah, just a h, and the reason why is that ah, is the first sound of the universe. It's the beginning sound of om. Om is aum aum. So it's the ah, and the ah is the invitation to surrender everything that's inside of you to meet the vibration of the universe at the point of your mouth and your throat and you're exchanging breath and so it's really this concentration of exchanging your breathing your first holy gift with the energy of the higher vibrational realms knowing that okay so now from away moving away from the esoteric and the spiritual and into pure quantum physics in the realm of the quantum you're making an impression on the field when you do this because the quantum field is impacted by intentionality and the intention 
determines the outcome. And these kinds of exercises, these kinds of harmonic resonances and heart resonance coherence, mm -hmm. heart coherence can be measured and have been measured by heart math. That's right. I People coming this. into vibration and resonance. Great with each other. work. Yes. yes. So beautiful. So when we do this and we do this chant and we send out this, hold this intention of love and peace. Love and peace. Imagine that you're sending a tsunami. It is a tsunami. Out into the into the field. <laughs> out to the field of wherever you are the field of your community and so that's the invitation or your family your family that's first right. for, yourself, for yourself then and for then your out. family then for your home and then your neighborhood and then your overflow your city and then your 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 state and then our your country and just on and just let it go let it expand so the invitation let it go. Let it is you're gonna take a deep breath and we're just gonna chant the note ah and it doesn't have to sound beautiful or pretty. There's no, this is not about singing. This is about surrendering mm -hmm. to light and love. So the invitation now is to take a deep breath and the, the belly, you want to take a belly breath and fill your belly with air so you can chant this note for a long time so you can feel the vibration. And we're going to do it five times. And then we will simply disconnect with lots of love to all of you and an invitation and knowing that you'll be doing this with us tomorrow at 222 as we will be doing this with a group of women in the wild in, <laughs> in the wild at the river yes. in the cold <laughs> all the feminine all the things all right yes. okay so deep breath in holding your intention of love and peace for yourself for those around you for your world Ah. have been listening to the powerful creator show thank you so much and celia and i would like to invite you to join us live on tuesday evenings you can find the zoom link at lessonsofmastery.com or join us live on the wisdom app and of course don't forget to like and subscribe this podcast if you want to hear all the future episodes thank you so much make it a magical week